Hey everybody, I'm James Gunn. I'm the co-CEO of DC Studios. So as many of you know, DC has been disconnected in film and television for a long time. And it's one of you know our jobs, mine and Peter's, is to come in and make sure the DCU is connected in film, television, gaming, and animation. That the characters are consistent, played by the same actors, and it works within one story. And if something is outside of that, like Matt Reeves' Batman or Todd Phillips' Joker or Teen Titans Go, that it is clearly labeled as DC Elseworlds, outside of the mainstream DCU continuity. Now, Peter and I have gotten pretty lucky in terms of the four projects that are coming out over the next year. First, we have Shazam! Fury of the Gods. Shazam! has always been off kind of in his own part of the DCU, so he connects very well. That moves directly into The Flash, a fantastic movie that I really love that resets that's the entire DC universe. And then to move into Blue Beetle, a fantastic film about a kid who's a marvelous part of the DCU, and then into Aquaman 2, which leads directly into our next few projects, which I'm gonna tell you about now. So, Peter and I, along with a group of very talented writers, have started to map out an eight to 10 year plan of what DC Studios will be in film, television, and gaming. This first chapter is called Gods and Monsters. Now this, what I'm about to tell you, is a part of the first chapter. It's not the entire first chapter. The first project is Creature Commandos. Creature Commandos is an animated series. I've written all the episodes. Something we're gonna do that's a little bit different at DC is we're gonna have characters move into animation, out of animation, usually having the same actor play their voice as who plays them in live action. The next project up is Waller. This is a story of Amanda Waller played by Viola Davis. Viola Davis is gonna team up with members of Team Peacemaker, and this is a story that's been created by Crystal Henry, who did Watchmen, and Jeremy Carver, who created the Doom Patrol. It is a fantastic story that's out of this world, and I can't wait for people to see it. Okay, next up is the big one, the true beginning of the DCU. This is called Superman Legacy. This is being written by me. I'm in the middle of it. I'm having a great time doing it. And Superman will be released into theaters July 11th, 2025. Okay, the next thing is a big premiere HBO television series called Lanterns. This is a story of a couple of Green Lanterns, John Stewart and Hal Jordan, and we have a few other lanterns peppered in there, but this is really a terrestrial-based TV show, which is almost like True Detective with a couple of Green Lanterns who are space cops watching over precinct Earth. In it, they discover a terrifying mystery that ties into our larger story of the DCU. Next is a big movie called The Authority. The Authority is a passion project of mine. It's based on the marvelous Wildstorm characters. We are now bringing into the DCU and will interact with all of our primary DCU characters. The Authority are a group of superheroes who think the world is broken and they wanna fix it by any means necessary. I think it's a very different look at superheroes we're doing a television series called Paradise Lost. Paradise Lost is a story of Paradise Island, usually known as Themyscira, which is the birthplace of Wonder Woman. It's almost like Game of Thrones with Westeros, but with all of the inhabitants of Paradise Island. The introduction of the DCU's Batman is The Brave and the Bold. The Brave and the Bold is the story of Batman and his actual son, Damian Wayne. This is based on Grant Morrison's great comic book run. Damian Wayne is my favorite Robin. He's a little assassin who Batman tries to get in line. And so this is the story of the two of them and the beginning of sort of the Bat family in the DCU. Next up is a TV series called Booster Gold. Booster Gold is one of comics' really popular cult heroes. He is a fascinating guy. He's a loser from the future who uses future technology to come back to present day and become a superhero so that people will love him. It is basically the superhero story of imposter syndrome on an HBO Max series. One of my favorite comic book series from last year was Tom King's run on Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow. And so we're gonna turn that into a big science fiction epic film. Now, Superman is a guy who was sent to Earth and raised by loving parents, where Supergirl in this story, she is a character who was raised on a chunk of Krypton. She watched everybody around her perish in some terrible way. So she's a much more jaded character. 
And that brings me to Swamp Thing, the last thing we're gonna talk about. A very dark horror story in the origins of the monster who is Swamp Thing. And although it's totally outside of the rest of the DCU, it will still feed into the rest of the stories. Anyway, those are the stories that I can tell you about right now. I've loved the DC characters since I was a child. They're incredibly important to me. I knew that this was a once in a lifetime opportunity to do something very different. One of the things that's very important for me in all of these movies and TV series is that the director's vision and the vision of the writers and all of the creators is unique and something special. Storytelling is always king. That's all that matters to us. And I wanna be true to those stories. I wanna be true to you guys and really give you something different than you've ever seen before. Anyway, thank you, everybody. I appreciate you watching. I hope this was exciting for you because it's really exciting for me. And I can't wait to start to dive into these stories with you guys on this grand adventure. Thank you so much.